Hello world, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to be building out a portfolio site by Babylon Agency. If you watched my previous video, then you might have seen the site mentioned as one of my five uh, award-winning portfolios. So I just wanted to take a moment and recreate this in Webflow. Now, I've created my own version of this site. I only utilize some of the more important elements such as the looping text and the navbar animations. I didn't um, fully replicate the website. Now, I also wanted to take a different approach to this video and not go through and create every single element. I sort of wanted to focus simply on the interactions. So I walked you through the elements that I made in Webflow, but I took a deeper dive into the interactions just because I feel like that's the most important part. Okay, let's get right into our walkthrough. On load, we have a logo animation. Now, um, as we scroll, we have a logo that pops into our nav bar as well. And our nav links have nice little hover interactions on them as well. Then we move into our hobby section where we have multiple images popping out as we scroll um, that section into view. There's also some looping text here, you know, multiple looping text. Now, um, as you hover on these, the color of the background changes. The same thing happens right here. Finally, we have our contact section. Now, again, very simple. Um, when we click on this link right here, it transports us seamlessly back to the start of the page. We have the same effect with our nav links here. So if we click on hobbies, it'll take us to hobbies. If we click on contact, it'll take us to contact. Now, uh, that's pretty much it for the walkthrough. Let's get right into building the site. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at um, is the logo as well as the nav bar. So let me just jump straight into Webflow so we can explore this. Now, like I mentioned in the intro, I'm not going to be going through and creating every part of the site. I'm just going to be looking through some of the settings and showing you guys how to build the interactions themselves because I feel like that's the most valuable piece of information. Ah, yeah. Okay, so um, starting here with our logo wrapper. So the reason that they're all separated one by one and not just one giant piece of text is because I want them to animate one at a time, right? So I want each letter to come in at separate times. So that's why we're using uh, different headings for each of them. So the, 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 there's also this logo wrapper that just keeps them uh, aligned and sort of in the center. Now, um, one very important setting that we have on this logo wrapper is this overflow hidden setting. So this setting really makes sure that um, anytime that we move our text, so if I switch back here, when, when our text starts out, it's underneath the logo wrapper itself and you can't really see it, so it gets cut off. So to create that effect, we're using the overflow hidden. Okay, perfect. Let's move on to the nav bar now. So the nav bar, as you can see, has um, some pretty basic settings. There is um yeah we we have this extra part right here this layers part that you see right here this is just for um it looks it's just for visuals it's just like taking up some part of the actual nav bar and it just acts as like a background layer thing now what we have here is our yet another logo um the logo that sort of appears as you scroll this fade in logo so that's what's over here and then we have our nav links here one by one now, what we can do with these nav links is we can create hover interactions for them. We already have um, them set up, so we have our trigger set up. So let's go ahead and explore those interactions. As you can see, if we hit preview on this one, it just sort of makes the size a little bit bigger. So we start at 0%, that's our initial state. And then after 0.3 seconds, we go to 90%. So that's our width. We can actually even change that to 100 like that. Okay, perfect. Now. Um, what we're going to do for the rest of our web page is we're actually going to create different sections, right? So we have different sections on our website. We have our sort of hello intro section here. We have our hobbies section, and then we have our contact section down at the bottom, right? So we are going to be linking these to the rest of our content by creating separate IDs for all of them. So this nav link, when, when you click here in the link settings and you go here to page section, it allows you to choose a page section. Right now, um, we already have two page sections. We have one for the top, which is just going to be the top of the actual um, page. So that's going to be the starting. And we're going to utilize that top section so that at the bottom, you see this button right here. If we click it, that takes us all the way to the top of the page. So yeah, that's something that we're going to be looking into in the future. 
in yeah in a couple minutes so um, let's go ahead and create the interaction or look at the interaction that brings this logo into frame so let's create a page trigger interaction so this uh, essentially saying that when the page is loaded this is what should happen so when the page starts loading i want this animation now this animation is a little bit broken but we're going to fix it so let me just delete okay there okay so how we're going to start this interaction off is we're going to go ahead and rotate all of these letters okay so I'm going to grab one of them and I'm going to hit rotate and I'm going to rotate them 20 degrees to the right. Just like that. Now, right now, this is affecting only the selected element, which happens to be letter A, but I want it to affect all five letters. So I'm going to hit select. I'm going to select class like that. Okay. And then I'm going to set as initial state because this is what I want it to be like in the starting. Now I'm going to grab uh, any other letter. It doesn't really matter which one, but I'm going to grab this one maybe. So the second letter and I'm just going to push it down maybe by 75% like that and then I'm going to grab my third letter and I'm going to push this down 100% and then I'm going to grab my fourth letter push this down by uh, 150% and then my four fifth letter and push this down by 200% like that okay now we're also going to push down this right here but what we need to be careful with is that because we've already selected that the logo nav it's it's thinking that we want to select all of the logo navs again so if i hit uh, move on this one it's not going to select just the a it's going to select all of them right so to fix this problem what we're going to do is we're going to go to our design panel and we're just going to delete this for once and then we're just going to duplicate this and then we'll bring back our a and now when we go back here we notice that it's not linked anymore right perfect now what we're going to do is we're going to grab this so this is our letter a so really this should be pushed down 50 percent and then we don't have anything pushing down letter d so let's push that down 75 percent now, just for organization's sake, I'm going to do this one by one. So first comes our logo rotate, then comes letter A, then comes letter D. This is letter I, this is letter T, and this is letter I again. So that's our initial state, A, D, I, T, I. Okay, perfect. So now we have all of our letters as well as our rotation. Now, let's start getting into the actual animating. So I'm going to grab letter A. And in starting, what I want to do is I want it to move back to 0%, and then I want the rotation to go away. So 0 degrees of rotation. So we'll worry about the easing settings and the duration settings in a little bit, but let's just leave it how it is for now. We're going to repeat the same process with the rest of them. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab the second one, and we'll move it again to um, 0%, and then get rid of the rotation okay so but instead of what we're going to do is we're going to give it a little bit of a delay so i'm going to grab both of these by hitting shift and then grabbing the other one and then what i'm going to do is just make sure to set the delay to be 0.1 seconds now i'm going to speed through the rest of this but essentially i'm just going to repeat the same process for the other logos There we go, I think we're done. Let's give it a preview. Perfect, we haven't even added any easing settings and already looks pretty good, but we wanna, we still do wanna add some easing settings. So I'm gonna grab the first one, I'm gonna hit shift, and then I'm gonna grab the last one. And what I'm gonna do is set the easing settings to something like ease and out, change the duration to 0.4 maybe, and let's try this out. Perfect, so that animation is definitely working. Great. The next animation that we're going to create is going to be this one. 
So the one where as we scroll down, this um, sort of logo fades in, and then as we scroll back up, it fades out. So that's also a page trigger. So we're gonna go ahead into page while page is scrolling, or no, my bad, while page is scrolled, okay? And the first animation that we want is when it's scrolled down. So that means when we're going down like this, we want it to fade in. So we're gonna call that um, nav logo fade in, okay? Now, all this is gonna do is we're just gonna grab the brand and I'm gonna bring the opacity up to 100% and then, and then scale it. So scale it to one. Uh, oh, set initial state. So this will be initial state we'll have of zero there. Okay, and we can obviously rotate it. So let's rotate it uh, 20 degrees. Okay, let's try this out. Okay, perfect. Now that's done. Let's go ahead and create the fade out. So what happens when we scroll back up? So that can just be nav logo fade out, and that's gonna have the opposite effect. So grab the brand, scale down to zero, and opacity down to zero as well. Perfect. We can actually give us some easing. So 0.3, we can do ease out, go back to our fade in, grab these, uh, Point three again and ease in. So let's preview this. Okay, okay, we want to ask to scroll. We don't have anything there. So let me just drag in a section just as a placeholder so that we can just scroll a little bit. So maybe get 200 bh space there. So our loading animation works. As we scroll, it fades in. We have this interaction right here. As we scroll back up, it fades out. Okay. I'm going to make this section a little bit longer even so that we can look at the position sticky of our nav bar. So if you notice the scroll bar right here, if I drag it, this nav bar stays sticky at the top and then it only goes back when we reach the top of the screen. So that's another cool effect that you can create. Very simple. Just go to nav bar settings, hit position sticky, and make sure you have some value at the top if you want to just stick this top, otherwise it won't work. Okay, great. That's it for the logo in the navbar section. Let's move on to the hero. So the next section that we have is our hobby section. So let's just look at this in its full view here, right? So we have, um, yeah. So as we scroll into view, these images pop out of this one place in the center. And then we also have some looping text that um, as you ever creates a nice effect. So it changes background colors. Now to create this in Webflow, if we just explore the content of these divs here. So we have uh, two different divs, main divs. We have the container and then we have the looping text. Let's explore the container first. So in the container, we have an image wrapper and then we have our text. This image wrapper is placed right over the text using position absolute. Now these images all have some border on them. Uh, we don't really need the actual images to be able to explore or show the, the effect. But yeah, so these just have background images on them and they are all slightly different sizes. So if you notice here, yep, they're all slightly different in terms of size, in terms of width, in terms of height. Now, um, our looping text, on the other hand, uh, lies in a separate div. Let's explore this scroll interaction first, though, the having the images pop in from the sides. So first thing that happens is they're all conjoined in the middle, but then they sort of rotate and move out. So as you can see, they start in the middle, but then they move to the right a little bit, they move to the left, and they move out like this, like so. Now this is using some, yes, just some delays. So each image moves out at a different rate. But so yeah, so this has a delay of so this is 0.4 seconds, but this has a delay and this has a delay and so on. They're all rotating a slightly different degrees to create a more haphazard effect, which sort of helps make it look even better. So yeah. Now, as far as creating the looping text, well, how this works is using a scroll interaction. So as we scroll into view, this looping text starts. Now, what we're doing is we're just moving it by percentage to a certain point. 
effect. So at initial state, it's just at 0%, but then uh, for 10 seconds, it moves to the left by a little bit and we stop it at a certain rate and we try to get this, the starting position or, or yeah, um, starting position to match up with the position that we have over here like that almost. And then we want it to go back to the beginning really quickly. So for that, we set zero duration and we just move it instantaneously back to starting. Yep, so that's how the looping text works. And then of course we just have our hover interaction that sort of just changes the background color as well as the text color into something different. So that's it for the hobby section. Moving on to the next, which is this looping text as well as this contact. The next section of our website consists of yet another looping text animation, this one moving in the opposite direction um, and it's a little bit bigger, as well as this final contact section that houses some links as well as a button that's going to take us to the top again. So that's uh, easily created in Webflow. So what we can do is give each of these sections different IDs. So if you look in the ID section and section settings, you can see that each of them has an ID. So this has an ID of intro, this has an ID of hobbies, and this has an ID of contact. Now, how we can get our links to match up with this is by we uh, going into the link and then choosing a paid section. So we want the hello section to be con uh, connected to the intro. We want the hobby section to be connected to the hobbies. And then we want the contact section to be connected to the contact. So yeah, the same principle again applies to our arrow here that's going to move us back to the top. So we just select the link and then we can select the section and choose top just like that we just have to wrap our um, icon in a link block so that we can give it a link now um now if we preview the site you can see that as we click over here it transports us back to the top and we can click on any of these links to again go to that part of the page so yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I wanted to take a more focused approach about the interactions and not go too far into detail about the building of the actual site elements. So uh, let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.